hello students i am back again to take up the rest of the story the blue bead by nora burke so in the last class i had explained about sibia the 12 year old child woman now before i move on to the line wise explanation of the story let me tell you about sibia the protagonist of the story now she was the one who had accepted the fact that she had been born to toil to work hard when she ate her meal she divided her chapati to make it visibly appear as more in number now imagine the plight of her poverty students she conformed herself to the village life and poverty to such an extent that even the thought of an agent sitting on silk cushions and smoking a hookah did not bother her sibia and her family were so poor that they could not buy a new needle to drill the seeds to make her necklace but sibia did not feel sorry at her poverty at all she was a dreamy and imaginative girl who thought of wonders of the world and took a swooping flight over the bright water and the golden air to the banks where she played as a child she was a courageous and adventurous girl and that is very clear from the story when she meets the gujar woman who was being attacked by a crocodile so how from boulder to boulder she went leaping like a rock goat to save the shrieking gujar woman and she used her presence of mind she aimed at the reptile's eyes with a hay fork attacked the crocodile defiantly and helped the woman reach her encampment safely so my dear students here sibia became the heroine of such an adventurous and life threatening battle with the crocodile even after this the only detail that she considered important to tell her mother was that she had found a blue bead for her necklace so this incident truly reveals that though sibia had accepted her poor condition deep in her heart she wished to have the wonders of the world so now back again to the explanation in all her life she had never owned anything but a rag she just had a piece of cloth she no, had never even owned one anna not a pice not a pie and she knew what finery was though she had been with her parents and brothers all through the jungle to the little town at the railhead where this bazaar was held and um she had walked through all the milling people and the dogs and the monkeys full of fleas the idling gossiping bargaining humanity spitting beetle juice heard the bell of a sacred bull clonking as he lumped along through the dust and the hubbub she had paused amazed before the sweet meat stall to gaze at the brilliant honey confections a buzz with dust and flies they smelled wonderful above the smells of drains and humanity and cheap cigarettes at home she sometimes tasted wild honey or crunched the syrup out of a stalk of sugarcane but the sweets these sweets were green and magenta there was no end to the wonders of the world but there there was the cloth star besides all this she also saw the cloth stall 
stacked with great rolls of new cotton cloth, stamped at the edge with the maker's sign of a tiger's head and smelling so wonderful of its dressing, straight from the mills that Sibya could have stood by it all day. But there were other wonders to see, satin soon with real silver thread. In tin trays from Birmingham and a sari which had got chips of looking glass embroidered into the border. She joined the crowd round a Kashmiri travelling merchant on his way to the bungalows. He was showing dawn-coloured silks that poured like cream and he'd got a little locked chest with turquoises and opals in it. Now, opal is a precious gem. Best of all, a box which when you pressed it, a bell tinkled and a yellow woolen chicken jumped out. Now, these were some amazing attractions that were actually um, catching Sibia's eye in the fair in the village there. There was no end to the wonders of the world. But Sibia, in all her life from birth to death, was marked for work. It was as if Sibia was made for work only and not to enjoy these wonders of the world. She was quite saddened. Since she could toddle, toddle is, has come from the word uh, it gives way to the word toddler. So, toddler is one who takes short, unsteady steps. Since the time she was very tiny, she was a toddler, she had husked corn. You may have seen students, um, villagers husking corn, you know, trying to separate the, uh, the corn from its covering, the, from its husk and gathered sticks. This was his, this was her uh, work. So, you can underline these lines, what all she did. Ca gathered sticks and put dung to dry. Dung is the excreta of the cattle and cooked and weeded. Weeded is to take out all the unwanted grass that grows in between the plants and carried and fetched water and cut grass for fodder. You can underline the word fodder. Fodder is a food for cattle. She was going with her mother and some other women now to get paper grass from the cliffs above the river. from the paper glass, uh, from the cliffs above the river. When you had enough of it, you could take it down by bullock cart to the railhead and sell it to the agent who would arrange for its um, dispatch to the paper mills. Now, when uh, she had enough of, um, you know, had collected enough of this, then it would be taken by the bullock cart to the railhead and it was to be sold to the agent who would then give, send it to the paper mills. The women often toiled all day. Toiled means worked hard all day at this work and the agent sat on silk cushions smoking a hookah. And the agent would just be sitting there, you know, comfortably and enjoying his leisure. Such thoughts did not trouble Sibia, however, as she skipped along with her sickle. Sickle you may have all seen. Uh, it's, a, it's an instrument or rather for cutting grass and homemade hay fork beside her mother. That hay fork is also for cutting grass, a sharp um, instrument for cutting grass. It's actually a long-handed uh, fork with two lo long curved prongs. You know, it's generally used for moving or turning hay. Uh, 
uh, you could skip on the way out but not on the way back when you ached with tiredness and there was a great load to carry you know she could go skipping for work but while coming back she was so dead tired that she couldn't possibly skip because and also she had to carry a lot of load way back from her work some of the women wearing necklaces made out of lal lal beejis now these are those red seeds beejis beejis means seeds the shiny scarlet seeds scarlet is red black one end that grew everywhere in the jungle it was best to have new necklaces each year instead of last year's faded ones and sibya was making one too now she would collect these uh, tiny scarlet seeds and you know she would make a, a garland uh, for an, a necklace for herself how nice it was going to be to hear that rattling swish round her neck rattling means very lively swish is something which makes you know a light sweeping or brushing sound so she just admired those re- uh, scarlet uh, tiny scarlet seeds because she would be making a necklace out of it and she would just love to flaunt that necklace as she frouched along with lots of necklaces as she frouched around means as she was you know emotionally bursting you can write that as she frouched means she was emotionally actually it was like uh, you know moved but each seed hard as stone had to be drilled with a red hot needle and the family needle was snapped so she must wait till they could buy another one but she couldn't possibly make because they did not uh, no more they now no more possess that family needle imagine how poor they were they had just one needle and that too it had been lost and so now she waited till they got one more so that she could pierce those seeds or drill with a red hot needle oh for strings and strings of glass and beads anklets earrings nose rings bangles all the gorgeous dazzle of the bazaar now she was totally you know enraptured by the the beautiful things which she really admired these wonders they were like wonders of the world for her and she found them all in the bazaar in the village and she was totally dazzled captivated by its beauty all her little golden body decorated and she just imagined as if she was you know completely decorated with all those things chattering as they went the women followed the dusty track towards the river on their way they passed a gujar encampment encampment is a place where a group is encamped that means it is a uh, set up and a camp is made for them of grass huts where these nomadic graziers nomadic means who roam around from place to place without a fixed pattern of movement where so where these uh, nomadic graziers who would move from one place to graziers means they used to graze their cattle would live for a time until their animals had perhaps finished all the easy grazing within reach and they would stay in a place till their animals finished grazing that particular area then they would pack up and move to another uh, area where they could graze their animals or they were, were not able to sell it enough of their white butter and white milk in the district or there was no one to buy the young male buffaloes for tiger bait now there were various reasons why mo- they moved from one place to another first it could be that they probably their animals grazed the whole area and they couldn't graze any more there was no more grass there for them to graze so they had to shift to another area secondly probably they um, were not able to sell enough of their white butter and white milk in that particular area where they were living 
and thirdly that there was no one to buy the young male buffaloes for tiger bait nobody was ready to buy their buffalo so they couldn't sell their uh, male buffaloes which are used as a bait for the tigers a bait is here like a when you try to attract an animal you try to catch an animal you have to put a bait so that acts as its prey or perhaps a cattle killing tiger was making a nuisance of himself or fourth reason was that why they moved from one place to another was that perhaps that whole area was making you know getting a lot of nuisance from the tiger which was uh, killing all the cattle sibia glanced at the gujar woman as she went past now she was looking at these gujar women women rather they were wearing trousers tight and wrinkled at the ankles and in their ears large silver rings made out of melted rupees those coins and one of them was clinking a stick against the big brass guras here this means gharas and one of them you know was just uh, trying to hit their gharas with uh, gharas with a stick and making that clinking sound when a uh, you know the sharp sound of a metal when it metal which is uh, you know when in something it is hit against something solid in which they fetched water from the river for the camp to see which ones were empty they used to just uh, you know hit their gharas or those uh, vessels for carrying water they were made those vessels were made of metal and with their sticks in order to know which uh, which one was empty so that they could fill up uh, the water from the river the men and boys were out of camp just now now children here again you must underline and note down the um, routine of these gujar women why did they uh, you know use a stick to hit their uh, vessels containing water uh, then the men and boys were out of camp just now with the herd or gone to the bazaar to sell produce but one or two buffaloes were standing about creatures of great wet noses and moving jaws and gaunt black bones gaunt here means very uh, skinny unpleasant in appearance the gujars were junglies as sibia was too born and bred in the forest sibia was also born and bred in the forest so she could be called a person living in the jungle a jungli for countless centuries their forebears forebears underline children it means ancestors had lived like this getting their living from the animals from grass and trees as they scratched their food together and stored their substance in large herds and silver jewelry they were man in the wandering pastoral age not stone age not stone age hunters and not yet cultivators you know they were like you know these gujar women were actually very strong they were like man in the wandering pastoral age Ah now there was a river twinkling between the trees sunlit beyond dark trunks they could hear it rushing along now they were excited because they found the river where they could fill from where they could fill the water in their vessels the women came out on the shore and made for the stepping stones they had plenty to laugh and bicker about bicker underline it means to quarrel as they approached the river in a noisy crowd they girded up their skirts now girded means to bind with a rope or a cord they just you know picked up their skirts so as to jump from stone to stone and they clanked their sickles and forks together clanking here means again making a loud sound when a metal is hit with a hard a solid thing and so they were hitting with their sickles and forks together they were trying to you know uh, 
make clinking sound by hitting sickles and forks together over their shoulders to have ease of movement. They shouted their quarrels above the gush of the river and they were busy fighting and quarreling, uh, you know, uh, with each other even. Noise frightens crocodiles. The big mugger did not move and all the women crossed in safety to the other bank. And they purposely did this and the clanking sound and huge, you know, chattering sound was made by the women because generally the crocodiles are frightened by noise. The big mugger or the crocodile did not move and they all managed to cross. Here they had to climb a still hillside. to get, a, get at the grass, but all fell to with a will and sliced away at it wherever there was foothold to be had. You know, they, they, it was difficult for them to climb up the hill and wherever uh, there was foothold to be had, they could keep their foot on, they would manage, otherwise they would just cut with their uh, sickles and knives. Down below them ran the broad river, pouring powerfully out from its deep, narrow pools among the cold cliff. Cliff means the peak of the mountain and shadows spreading into warm shallows, lit by kingfishers. These are all the sea animals. Great turtles lived there, you can underline all these, and Masir. Now, Masir is a common name given to tiger-like fishes. So, you can underline and write. More than a hundred pounds. It weighed more than a hundred pounds. Crocodiles too were there in that river. Sometimes you could see them lying out on those slabs of clay over there, but there were none to be seen at the moment. At that moment, nothing could be seen, although that river consists, consisted of a number of huge sea animals. Where Sibia was working, wind coming across hundreds of miles of trees cooled her sweating body and she could look down over the river as if she were a bird. Although she did not dare stop for a moment under her mother's eye, her imagination took her in, in a sweeping, swooping flight over the bright wet water and golden air to the banks where she had played as a child. She just managed, you know, her eyes swooped over to, the, to that part of the bank where she had played as a child. In those cavelets above the high water, so uh, cavelets, those small cave-like places, Above the high water mark of the highest flood, she had stored some little bowls molded of clay while they hardened as if there were anything that could be used for colouring, they would look fine, painted with marigolds and elephants. You know, she had made some clay uh, bowls and she had put them in those cavelets above the, wherever, you know, in those cracks and crevices above the high water mark. Child, the sharp word, the glare of her mother's angry, sweating face pulled Sibia back to work and they toiled on. She wanted to stop there, but her mother said that they should go on with their work. But at last it was time to go back to see their animals and the evening meal. The loaded women set out to cross the river again. Sibia hung back. She would just dawdle a, a bit. Dawdle here means to move or act too slowly and run and see if the little clay cups were still there in the cave, waiting to be painted and used. Although the women were now tired and loaded, they still talked. Those in front yelled, yelled means screamed to those behind. They crossed the river safely and disappeared up the track into the trees on the other side. Even their voices died away. Silence fell. Sibia came down alone to the stepping stones. The light of the evening was striking up the gorge. Gorge is actually a crack between two hills, pink into the ultraviolet shadows. Now that the sun was off, 
it the water poured almost invisible among the stones with no reflect reflection to show where it began sibia stepped onto the first stone she was heavily weighted her muscles stretched and aching the hay fox squeaked in the packed dry grass and dug into her collarbone so close under the skin in spite of the sari punched up to make a pad she was literally hurt by the hay fox when she was half way over she put her load down on a big boulder to rest and leaned breathing on the fork you can just visualize everything children here so uh, my dear students this is all for today there'll be another part to the explanation of this story since it's a very long story so see you till then revise well thank you